demo for this week is for the slip stitch. If you've never done the slip stitch before or, or if you're not familiar with it, oftentimes in bags there's about two methods to finish. Um, most of the time there's a hole left in the lining of the bag. And let me show you what I mean um, with my Oreo bag, my little Oreo bag right here. So the first method is for the lazy sewist, which is me for sure. Um, the first method is to close the opening in the lining, which there's often an opening left because of sewing the bag right sides together and um, having an opening in the lining where you pull everything through. So I have my opening in the lining, which um, I was lucky enough to find a really great coordinating thread to my lining fabric, but I top stitched this particular lining closed with my machine and that was done by folding the opening toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch and using an eighth of an inch to top stitch the lining close. So that usually works for me. However, if you're giving a bag for a gift or selling a bag, you might consider slip stitching the opening in the lining closed by hand. So let me pull out um, this Minikin Zeppelin pouch that I made some time ago. And I'm a really big offender for doing this, but I often finish bags, especially if they're bags that I'm not planning on using, or maybe I, I'm just going to show them for trunk shows. Um, but I just leave my linings um, unfinished, and that was the case. I think I finished this bag in January. It's May now, and it still has an opening in the lining. So let me pull off the Wonder Clips and show you exactly what I've done here. And actually, let me fold back the lining a little bit so I have full access to the lining. So here's that opening in the lining, and I've pressed the opening toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch, just so we don't have any raw edges showing. And then what those Wonder Clips were doing were just holding the opening in toward the wrong side in preparation for the slip stitch. So let me show you how to do that. Um, for those of you that have never done it before, I'm gonna walk you through closing the entire opening. For some people that might only need to see the stitch once or you've done this before, I wrote myself a list of talking points so that we could have a bit of a chat and um, talk my way through this while still showing those of you that have not done the slip stitch before exactly how to do it. So I'm, for this demo, I'm using Tulip applique needles and these are number 10 big eye needles. Uh, you might have a different preference for needles for hand sewing as well. Um, but this is what, what it looks like um, when it's unboxed. And I'm gonna use a black Orifil 40 weight thread just so you can see exactly what I'm doing with my stitches. Um, normally I like to take the, the spool of thread and hold it up to the hold it up to my elbow so that I have a long enough thread. Um, you'll want to use of course a coordinating thread with your lining so that less of your stitches are showing though. Okay so I have to laugh because um, yesterday when I was talking about doing this demo um, Danny suggested uh, for these demos why don't we uh, pre-shoot these videos instead of showing this live so that you don't have to be stressed out about making a mistake and um, I'm really good at threading a needle most of the time but I thought with my luck on the live show I'll probably try seven times to thread the needle and not be successful so I have a backup needle that I threaded before the show but let's see if I can go ahead and get this threaded on the first try. Danny I don't know if it does it make sense to zoom in a little bit for this part or we're gonna zoom in a little I think. Okay, so I've got my thread. I'm holding it between my thumb and my finger, and I'm just going to pull the thread down until it's sort of almost, you can't see it. And then I'm going to take the needle, and I'm just going to push it down right on top of the thread. There we go. Okay, I got it threaded on the first try. Try live. That's great. Okay, so I'm going to pull the thread through. Do I need to hold my finger in a different position? Yeah. There we go. Center it in the center more. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I pulled the thread through. And I'm going to knot the other end of the thread, just the, the one strand, the loose end. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to take the needle and hold the thread in my finger, and I'm just going to wrap it around a bunch of times. Normally, I'm shooting for eight times that I'm wrapping the, the thread around the needle. Okay, and then I'm going to pull that thread down, and it's going to create a knot. So I'm just going to take my little scissors and snip close to that knot so that I don't have a tail hanging. So that's what the knot looks like. And I'm gonna start hand sewing from this end. So here's the fold of the fabric right here. I'm gonna bring, bring the needle through um, lower than the fold so that the knot can be concealed. 
and I'm just going to pull that through. So there's my knot over there and I'm going to make sure I bring those fabrics so that the right sides together. Okay, so I'm going to grab where the fabric is folded. I'm just going to grab a little bit, little chunk of the fabric, just like this. And I'm going to pull it through. Okay, directly across from where that thread is sticking up, I'm going to grab another chunk right on the, the fold and then pull that through. So we're kind of making a zig zigzag notion and you can certainly make your stitches a bit bigger. So again, I'm just going to come across from the thread. I'll try to make these stitches a bit bigger so this doesn't take forever. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to keep sewing just so you can continue to see what I'm doing. And then I'll have a little bit of chat of a few things that I had written down before the show that I wanted to talk about. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the miracle of the internet. So I would say maybe two or three years ago, this live show that we're doing now would never have happened. So five, ten years ago even, to have a show, I consider this almost like a TV show. To have a TV show, you would have to know somebody, go to a production company that produces TV shows, say for PBS, like a sewing or quilting TV show, and they'd be looking for certain talent. So I believe that I would not be the talent that a, a TV program would be looking for just because I'm sort of on the quiet side and also my craft is a subcategory of a subcategory. So sewing and quilting is a category, bag making or other handcrafts like embroidery or cross stitch would be subcategories and so I don't think you would ever have seen a TV show on PBS for bag, a show direct, directly related to bag making, um, which I find really interesting. Um, but due to the miracle of the internet and having a live show, anyone can just take out a cell phone and start recording whatever they want to record. So I'm super thankful for technology and for my husband who has learned how to use said technology. The other funny thing that I was thinking about earlier about the live shows is that if I had gone to a TV production company and pitched a TV show, um, they also wouldn't have accepted our pitch because my husband's on my show with me every Tuesday and he doesn't sew. And I can't imagine a TV show picking up someone, uh, a woman and her husband, the husband doesn't sew, the woman makes bags. And uh, it just was a funny thing to me. So just something funny that I was thinking about earlier, but thank you so much for watching our live shows because we really love doing them and love having the chance to come to you live twice a week. And thanks so much for watching. And I'm glad so many bag ladies are out there because I think if we had had five people watching week after week, we probably wouldn't have been doing the show very long. But I looked back on my, my website to see when exactly we started doing these live shows. And we're coming up on the one year anniversary. So we started doing Social Sunday, June 11th of 2017, so it's almost been a whole year. We only started doing the YouTube live shows in 2018, but um, almost a whole year for the Facebook live shows and looking at some of those older Facebook live shows, they're kind of a little bit rough on the lighting and production, so we've, we've taken certainly a lot of strides since then. Um, it's a funny thing too that I'm still nervous uh, each week before I go live on the show, you know, maybe an hour or two before we were scheduled to go live. My stomach hurts. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I getting sick? But <laughs> I realize, you know, once we get the show rolling that it's just nerves and I'm always fine after we get going and I start talking. And uh, anyway, we've been having so much do fun doing the shows and so happy to continue doing them. Okay, so I'm almost to the end of my slip stitch over here closing the opening of my Zeppelin pouch and it's really easy to just knot off the end when you get to the end. So I'm going to take, I think, two more stitches and then I'll show you how to knot the final project. So I'm certainly not an expert at hand sewing, but I do well enough to finish the openings. I used to hate hand sewing bags, like hate it. Like I would rather glue something closed than um, finish something by hand, but I've come to love it. So I was busy talking instead of directing my knot. So when you come to the end, go ahead and pull the thread through and leave a little bit of a loop so that you can come through with your needle 
and make a knot. And you only need to knot a couple times. You can certainly knot three times for good measure. Um, but again, you want to use a coordinating thread. Um, I used black over here just so you could see exactly what I'm doing. Um, but use a coordinating thread and then your stitches will be hidden. Okay. All right, so I tied my final knot. I'm just going to go ahead and clip this. And as you can see, that um, opening looks a lot nicer after being um, done with a slip stitch. But again, I'm a lazy sewer and you certainly can close your openings by machine if you prefer to do that instead. So hope you enjoyed that little demo. And if you haven't done a slip stitch for your bags to close the openings in the past, maybe on the next bag that you make, you'll give it a try. And the more you practice the slip stitch and hand sewing, the more comfortable you'll be.